Now, I spent 10 years working at NASA. In the beginning of my time there in 2000, I was very interested in communities, but this is the kind of community I was thinking of. A lunar community. It had all of the same needs as a community on Earth would have, but it had some very unique constraints. And we had to think about how we would provide energy for this very unique community. There's no coal on the moon. There's no petroleum. There's no natural gas. There's no atmosphere. There's no wind either. And solar power had a real problem. The moon orbits the Earth once a month. For two weeks, the sun goes down and your solar panels don't make any energy. If you want to try to store enough energy and batteries for two weeks, it just simply isn't practical. So nuclear energy was really the only choice. Now there's no lakes or rivers on the moon. So if all of this makes it sound like water-cooled reactors aren't such a good fit for a lunar community, I would tend to agree with you. <laughs> you see, I had the good fortune to learn about a different form of nuclear power that doesn't have all these problems for a very simple reason. It's not based on water cooling and it doesn't use solid fuel. Surprisingly, it's based on salt. One day I was in a friend's office at work and I noticed this book on the shelf, Fluid-Fueled Reactors, and I was interested and asked him if I could borrow it. Inside that book I learned about research in the United States back in the 1950s into a kind of nuclear reactor that wasn't based on solid fuel or on water cooling. It didn't have the problems of the water-cooled reactor. And the reason why was pretty neat. It used a mixture of fluoride salts as a nuclear fuel, specifically the fluorides of lithium, beryllium, uranium, and thorium. Fluoride salts are remarkably chemically stable. They do not react with air and water. You have to heat them up to about 400 degrees Celsius to get them to melt, but that's actually perfect for trying to generate power in a nuclear reactor. Here's the real magic. They don't have to operate at high pressure. And that makes the biggest difference of all. Now this was sounding pretty good to me and I was getting excited about the potential of using a liquid fluoride reactor to power a lunar community. We can recycle all of the air, water, and waste products within the lunar community. In fact, doing so would be an absolute requirement for success. But I had a simple question. If it was such a great thing for a community on the moon, why not a community on the Earth? A community of the future, self-sustaining and energy independent. The same energy generation and recycling techniques that can have a powerful impact on surviving on the moon could also have a powerful impact on surviving on the Earth.